This is Stacy Marshall with Printwear Magazine. Matt Vassallo with TheRidingStoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. <laughs> I like the way Stacy says it as a question. Podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, great stuff for sure. Uh, all right. We, thank you to all those people that do those intros. That's uh, oh, absolutely. It's a lot of fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the show, oh, everyone. It is just Friday. just up, I think. May 24th. Oh boy. Uh, let's see here. We're <laughs> we blew it up. Uh, Terry, if you, Terry, go ahead and reload. Uh, yeah, we, we blew this thing up. It's too much, too much fun for one morning, I guess. Uh, Apparently. Uh, all right. So everybody hang tight real quick while uh, <laughs> Lenora says, are there technical difficulties or is it me? Uh, no, Lenora, it is us. It is. Yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> we're definitely having difficulties, Lenora. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Uh, oh, I, we tried to do too much videos and, and the whole thing uh, too much. Uh, yeah, Terry says, I think we should start again. That sounds sounds like a good plan. <laughs> all right. So hang tight, everybody. We're going to get there. Um, the storms. <laughs> yes, we, we've got all sorts of uh, great excuses other than than just <laughs> just me. <laughs> All right. So, Eric, let's see. Yeah, we're going to restart this again. Thank you guys, everybody, for <laughs> joining us and tuning in and, and working through the uh, uh, Lenora says always thrilling. It's not my fault. All right. So uh, there is our man, Terry Combs back. <laughs> Terry, we blew it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> we blew right. up the Internet again. We, we blew up the Internet. Yeah, we blew it up at my. But just anyhow. Not not the way we'd hoped. <laughs> not the way. We'd hoped. All right. Well, you know what? Let's let's start over here. Um, I'm not even gonna. You guys are all gonna be on screen. We're gonna do an intro so that way I can cut from here when the podcast version goes out, and uh, and we can get this party started here. So uh, let me find just the audio this time, so I don't blow up the internet again. Here we go. All right. This is Charlie Talweeb with Talweeb Consulting. Greg Kitson with Minds Eye Graphics. Pierre with Blue Moon. This is Marsha Derryberry with Impressions Magazine. And you're listening to the Two Regular Guys. Two Regular Guys. Two Regular Guys podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. It's the first and most listened to favorite weekly internet radio show in the industry. Take a listen. All right. Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, May 24th, 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at equipmentzone.com and also terrycombs.com. 
And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at AaronMontgomery.info. Uh, today, we're talking about all the wrong ways to decorate and the misinformation in a misinformation universe, excuse me. So in other words, we're gonna talk about all the bad information out there and encourage you to share your stories of misinformation too. So um, glad we've got tons of uh, viewers checking in. Uh, love to hear all of your comments, feedback, things that you've heard that uh, kind of made, made you go, hmm, right? Is that how that goes? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and as you can tell, our, our incredible, uh, awesome. Let's see, let's come up with some other adjectives. The man, the myth, the legend, Eric Campbell is joining us today. And uh, so welcome to the show, Eric. Uh, glad to be in. And I have plenty of things to complain about as we usually do on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so Go, go ahead, Terry. Well, on my end, I've got uh, between the tree trimmers who um, every time I think they're walking away, come back and get one more limb. Uh, and <laughs> and the hurricane that I call my grandsons who are uh, on the other side of my locked door here, <laughs> uh, almost five, almost three and six months old. And uh, Whoa. <laughs> they've already burst into uh, into the room here a couple of times. So I had to lock the door and they're off to the park so that uh, so that grandpa can uh, finish the show here. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Well, my, my wife, uh, as I was telling her about our topic today, did remind me that uh, we have to stay positive, though. She's Miss Positive, and she keeps me uh, keeps me headed in that direction. So obviously, we want to share some things that we think aren't correct, but uh, you know, we want to have some fun, and we also want to you know, kind of give our take on what maybe the actual information is. And, and same thing for you guys in the comment section. Please... Uh, share all your stories. We want to have some fun with this, but we also want to make sure that we're sharing some really great information. So, so keep it coming and keep it rolling. And, uh, but before we do that, Terry, you've got some shout outs from uh, one of your recent travels. I do. And, and, and before I say that, uh, I was chatting with Jeff Morgenthaler this morning and, uh, he said, what's your show about? I, I've got tons of things. <laughs> and I'm like, well, jump on, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Jeff, if you're listening, we expect, uh, we expect Please. some gold from you, sir. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, my shout out is from the NBM show in Milwaukee. Uh, first time there. And, and I don't recall ever uh, any garment decorating trade show in Milwaukee. It was, uh, it wasn't super busy, but uh, for all the vendors out there, there were buyers and, and uh, vendors know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, hey, I, I don't care if there's five people or a thousand people, as long as somebody's interested in talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, equipment or whatever, I'm I'm all uh, all about it. So, but nice. a couple of folks came by, um, Bill Lubers and uh, Linda Becker from Fox Lake, Illinois, stopped by as uh, regular, two regular guys listeners, uh, our regulators, and uh, they came by to our say regulators. hello. Yeah, exactly. Yep. They. <laughs> They attended uh, my screen printing class with Atlas Screen Supply in Chicago a few years ago nice. also. And uh, and so Bill and Linda, thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping by. We love, uh, by the way, when uh, any of us are at trade shows uh, to come by and say hello and and uh, make sure that we scan your badge so that we, uh, we're we sure to give you a shout out here on the show. Yeah, definitely. I lo love it. I, I got to meet uh, Bill and Linda at uh, DAC Chicago and uh, talk to nice. them for a little while. So uh, yeah, it was great getting to catch up with them and, and uh, hear about their story. And um, yeah. <laughs> Bill said, okay, so I'm, I'm at this part of, you know, I think he was like in season five of, of uh, two regular guys. I'm like, oh, did you go all the way back to season one? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's heard that now twice because I said the same thing to him a couple of days ago. <laughs> we need to, we need to delete season one. <laughs> uh, it's, it's oh. where we came from. It's, it's oh, history. Our, our I mean, it's not science, but it is history. <laughs> not the <laughs> science of our of our current uh, show. But, uh, <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Yeah, well, hey, we, we want to thank all the regular listeners, uh, the regulators, and, and any new listeners tuning in today. If you have an idea for a future show, go to our Contact Us page at 2, the number 2, regularguys.com. Or reach out to us on social media. We are everywhere. Uh, that's two regular guys. If you are watching us live via Facebook Live, uh, make sure you jump in and participate. I know that all of you have heard things in the industry that you know are not true. So please share with <laughs> share those with us. Or maybe you've heard something and you're wondering if it is true. And and probably one of us can give you an answer on that because we're going to cover a lot of subject areas. But yeah. uh, in the meantime, uh, let's hear a word from our gold sponsor.
All right, there we go. So thank you very much to Embrilliance. Uh, Eric, what, uh, what's some of the other fun happenings going on over there at Embrilliance right now? Well, the one thing I want to make sure everybody gets in on is that we currently have the beta running for the new release. And some of the stuff that's coming out right now, new versions are being added during the beta. We're releasing more and more of what this new capability is going to be. A uh, really huge thing coming out, absolutely, is that we've got um, font publishing in our top Stitch Artist 3 version. We now have object-based font publishing. People who want to sell to the other Imbrilliance users, it includes being able to publish your own font files and distribute those. And that's really cool. So object-based scalable fonts. And uh, we've got some other features, enveloping and some other things coming up that have been teased. And you'll be able to test those if you get on the beta. So anybody who currently owns uh, Imbrilliance products, any of the products, not just Stitch Artist, if you go and check out the uh, news, we do have the new beta up and we're updating it frequently. i uh, love to have you get in and test and contact us at support and tell us what you think. Excellent, excellent. Um, so yeah, so Terry, I'm gonna steal your your line here, but uh, you know, Brighton Leap, we really appreciate their support of our shows. And uh, you know, they though they are our gold sponsor, we still have sponsorship availability. So uh, in some other areas, so if you just head over to two, the number two, regularguys.com <laughs> slash sponsorship, that will get you all the details and you can reach out to us and we can uh, talk about how we can best uh, help your business. So uh, looking forward to talking to some new people. We've got a few people, uh, in the works too, that uh, that we're, we're, we may have some new sponsors coming on soon. So excited about that. Um, cool. And a couple, uh, we've got some already some great comments uh, happening <laughs> on the uh, on, in the in the chat section here. So Cindy uh, King said, "Our blue shirts the standard on the show." I had to look no. down when I read that. <laughs> yeah, yep, okay. But, nope. No planning, had a black shirt on and switched it. So <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. That has so more to do with next the in the closet mind. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, lots of people checking in we appreciate that keep those comments coming and uh, uh hello, hello yes, everybody uh, we're, we're we're looking forward to hearing uh so all the feedback today so blue shirt standard we're going to call that misinformation because it is not no it's it not, not, not we'll classify our, first, that as... our first misinformation <laughs> <laughs> there we go thank you cindy <laughs> 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 So, um, all right. Well, let's see here. So I guess uh, my my job today is to try to keep this fun party under control. Uh, not sure I'll have any luck with that because <laughs> I can't keep myself under control half the time. But uh, no. I guess it, the way we kind of looked at this show is is I'm going to be emceeing this. You guys uh, have a lot of actual production experience. I have very little. Um, so I and I always when I talk about stuff, I always preface it with that, that, uh, you know, I've, I'm sharing information that I've learned from people that I trust, you know, like Eric and like mm -hmm. Terry and, and like the other people that, uh, I've gotten my information from over the years. So, um, you know, I, I've gotten in and done enough and, and, uh, actually fairly involved in a sublimation production uh, company right now over at pick the gifts. So, uh, you know, I, I would not say I'm a, a total slouch, but uh, I certainly <laughs> don't have the level of experience that uh, Eric and Terry do. So so with that being said, um, guys, we only have an hour. And um, <laughs> <laughs> but before I turn it over to you guys, I, I did want to and I've got a couple that I'll share along the way here, too. But I, I wanted to share a note that I got from Terry Saunders of CMO Screen Printing Supply. Uh, this was a while back. We were uh, direct messaging on, on Facebook. And, uh, but I thought this kind of fit really nicely into what we're talking about today. She was actually suggesting a show topic to me of, of kind of, uh, crazy questions that, uh, people have gotten over the years. So, uh, and here were two, and, and again, she's screen printing supply. So this is somebody, uh, newbie into screen printing asking, can I cure my shirts in my clothes dryer? Terry, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, what's funny is that's the second time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, then the follow-up question when that, when that was answered in a nice way, uh, no, uh, was, can I use my hair dryer? <laughs> <laughs> and no. No. Okay. All right. So they're, yeah, they're, I, I'm the embroidery guy, and I was sure for moment one that those weren't good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the scenario: you need to get the 320 degrees, and if your hair dryer's at 320 degrees, I think you uh, <laughs> we you would see you walking problem. down the street. You'd have kind of brittle, <laughs> stiff. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the clothes dryer thing. Uh, it was it's funny. Several years ago, I was uh, 
I was having dinner with uh, some friends from Wilflex and, and we were talking about, the, you know, that's what we do when we go out together. We talk about the crazy stories we hear. And, and, and this woman from Wilflex was saying, I, I was just having the hardest time figuring out that, you know, some of my shirts look fine, but others that come out of the dryer, there's ink all over them. And, and we're all like, what? they're like rolling up in the dryer or she goes, Oh no, it's better than that. It turns out it was her clothes dryer that they, <laughs> they were putting the shirts into. So, so, Hey, I apparently not as uh, uncommon as we might imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, my, my flat iron goes to 450. Yeah. Yeah. But then you're going to have to be okay. scraping that across uh, the ink. So, uh, <laughs> and, and no, you can't sublimate with your flat iron. <laughs> I don't think that's a good plan. Before anybody asks, right? Don't, don't, huh. don't do that. I wonder if you could do now. Now you've got me thinking. I'm not good. Would it work? Can, can I put like shirt labels in or something like that with the flat iron? All right. Uh, all right. We're, we're way off the rails. And again, don't my job is to uh, keep us on that. The, this is not a crap YouTube corner. Correct. No, yeah, really, we have we have gone off on on a massive tangent before we even started with the very first one. <laughs> well, well, let's Looks like we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Terry, Terry, you're, right. you're up first. Start us all off, and uh, all right, we'll get here, this party here, going. Here's a brand new one, and and I don't think I've ever talked about it here in the show because it's the last couple of seminars I've done. Uh, this has popped up uh, in, in, uh, at uh, ISS, at DAX, uh, and at the MBM shows. I, I do seminars on uh, both screen printing and on uh, direct garment. And the last few shows, I, I've, I'll, I'll start talking about pre-treating and, and the rule of pre-treating, and that's spraying, spraying a pre-treat solution onto a shirt before you print it, is you must pre-treat if you print white ink. You absolutely must pre-treat if you use white ink. Uh, you can pre-treat, but you, you don't have to pre-treat if you're only printing CMYK. And uh, two or three people will raise their hands saying, well, the person, the company I bought my machine from says I have to pre-treat everything. And I'm like, well, no, that's incorrect. And the first time I thought, well, they just heard it wrong. And then, <laughs> and then the last class I did at DAX where it came up, two different people said that they had been told that two different brands of machines. So I, cause then I'm thinking, well, maybe somebody has a new ink system where you have to pre-treat. No, it's just uh, misinformation. You do not have to pre-treat a shirt if it is CMYK. Now, of course, if it's CMYK only, the, the uh, direct garment inks, just like sublimation, sublimation inks are transparent, which means that if you're going on a, on a yellow shirt and you print a blue ball, it's going to be green. But if you're going on a yellow shirt, and you're printing navy. You're perfectly fine. Yeah. But we're primarily talking about white shirts and and pastel shirts. Uh, any anything darker than that, you're going to have to lay down a white underbase to print a white underbase. You have to pre-treat the shirt. And and for anybody who doesn't know direct to garment garment, um, what we're doing here is this: if you're a screen printer, you print a white underbase, you flash it to gel the ink. Then you come back and you print your colors on top. Pre-treating is the exact same thing. What happens with the, the dried pre-treat on your shirt is when the white ink touches that pre-treat, it starts to cure, but from the bottom up. Mm. And that's how we can get a white water-based ink to stay up on top of a of 100% cotton or, or a high cotton content blend shirt or, or even a tri-blend. But the, the, that's the process. But uh, now, now the, the flip side of that is... Will I get a brighter, crisper image if I pre-treat a white shirt? You will. Uh, it, it, does it matter? Now, and here's here's my comparison. Somebody comes in and they want the picture of their grandkids uh, under the Christmas tree. I'm going to bring that white shirt out with that picture on it, and, and Grandma's going to say, that is awesome. Then I'm going to bring out another shirt. I'm not going to really do this, fans. <laughs> I'm going to bring out another shirt that's pre-treated, and hey, the uh, the tree trimmers are back. I'm going to bring out another <laughs> shirt that that has been pre-treated, and Grandma's going to say, "Well, that looks even a little bit better." Me personally, I'm a production guy. You had me at awesome, uh, so it really depends on your customer base. But uh, yeah, you yeah. you are not required sure. to pre-treat a a light or white shirt only yeah. when you use white ink. So, yeah. and, and can I add a part B? And that should wrap up our show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can hardly stop you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Even Aaron, if I, Aaron, I don't Aaron want has full control of turning off my microphone. <laughs> I'm okay, hovering over it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's part B. Uh, something that I hear a lot. And this is something that you see on the internet quite a bit. Uh, you have to print the shirt that you pre-treated within two weeks. And that is in, 
that's completely false, completely false. I think that maybe they've, they've taken, uh, normally when you, when you code a screen for screen printing, really ideally you, you use it within two weeks because it gets more and more difficult to wash out. I'm thinking maybe that's where that came from, but uh, you can pre-treat a shirt today, come back and, and, pick it up a year from today and print it and it will look exactly the same as if you printed it the, the day you pre-treated. So there's no time limit on, on a pre-treated shirt. I mean, look at RTP apparel, their shirts are, are pre-treated uh, before you buy them. Uh, and you don't know if that shirt was pre-treated yesterday or two years ago. So uh, that, that's another fallacy in the in industry that, that you can, uh, it doesn't matter when you pre-treat. Now, if you've stored shirts for a long time and they're stacked on top of each other, first of all, stack them face to face, pre-treated shirt against a uh, face against a pre-treated face and, and like that. But hit it with your heat press for three or four seconds before you print to lay those fibers down just to give you a better quality print. Okay, that's part B. Sorry, I took uh, I took my extra time. <laughs> oh, I ye I yield my time to Eric. <laughs> well, hold, hold on, hold on. We we've, we've got to yield to the regulators here. So oh, okay. we've got some good comments in here that we want to share. Uh, Lenora says, uh, "Screen print in salon shirts while you get your hair done." Um, All so, at the same tool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, misinformation. <laughs> um, Christine says. Christine says, I knew this was going to be anarchy. It's enjoyable and informative anarchy, though. So that. <laughs> that's, and, that's uh, usually the host shows, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah totally. that's right. Grandma we're, won't see the difference. So we're uh, agreeing with you, Terry. <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're usually a little more subdued when we have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. slightly slightly i guess i'll take over from that then so this, and and i have a part b on my thing i'm gonna warn you ahead of time that i'm gonna jump to a part b but <laughs> let's start with the thing that i have talked about this before but it happens so frequently and it's such a problem that i'm going to talk about it yet again now um the first and most well-known thing that everybody gets wrong with embroidery is stabilizer and the first thing I'm going to note, have you notice about that is I didn't just call it backing. It is not just a thing that goes behind the material. It's <laughs> stabilizer because it has to lend dimensional stability. What do I mean by that? Um, you don't want your fabric to stretch in any appreciable direction, which is also why most stabilizers are like a felt. They're a wet laid non-directional fiber material. Why? No direction stretches much more than any other direction. Um, and that's why I start and say stabilizer, because people uh, put whatever they think looks like stabilizer inside of their machines, especially people who come from like hobby and craft sometimes, with the, or they'll do things like this. They'll take themselves a, a piece of stabilizer and they use it and then they start getting scraps together because they don't want to waste stabilizer. And they'll use multiple scraps to cover the back of the hoop. Now we have multiple pieces that aren't connected. No more dimensional stability. It's not just supposed to be back there. It's not just back there to to cover the back of it. It's specifically there to provide dimensional stability in the hoop. Also, um, that kind of lends, and I, this is a fight that especially in like the home markets, the craft markets gets a little heated, uh, hooping versus floating, uh, which is where you actually press it all together in the hoop. The hoop ring holds everything, including the stabilizer and the material. Some people don't like to do that because it's difficult and you can get these marks, these hoop burns from pressing the hoop down into uh, materials that kind of have some of uh, the ability to crush or they'll get shiny in that hoop ring. Um, Frequently, people will then hoop something, use something sticky, and then lay fabric down on top of it. But that means there's not much arresting the movement or that stretch or the, the uh, directional stretch of the shirt or compression. That's one of those things people realize. If you've digitized, you know. When you digitize a design, you have to have compensation because stitches pull toward the center and push toward the opposite sides. Um, when you're pulling and pushing, it's moving the garment around. It's not just the embroidery that moves, it's the garment that's distorting. You're gathering up the garment. So stabilizer is to help arrest that movement. So uh, coffee filters, dryer sheets, paper, the cardboard that's inside the hat, none of these things are stabilizer. <laughs> uh, don't run them in there. They, even if it looks like it, it's not. So, And I've heard every, everything from that to, there was a guy who was doing um, paper towels. Um, will it possibly work? The problem is you probably didn't need any in what you were doing, or honestly, um, yes, maybe that worked, but some wash away stabilizer is nicer than paper towel fiber going everywhere. Yeah. I see Mar Marriott's comment. You just put it there. You can use tear away on everything. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and she's no. not saying that. She, it was yeah, a I know. She's like, right? Joke. Not, like, right? No, people not, say yeah. that. 
I do. I do like the cardboard in the hat. That's that's. Oh, the cardboard in the hat. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Will leave that in there? (laughs) Just leave it in there. Yeah, I've seen people do it. The truth of the matter is, most of the time they may not have needed it as much. But here's the other thing. The other thing for stabilizer and hats, um, it's there is a reason that it's not dimensional stability. Uh, I will use a tearaway stabilizer in a super high constructed hat, not because I'm trying to get more stability necessarily, unless I'm running on the sides. But because it also keeps the the needle plate from catching on seams and stuff on the inside, hmm. I now have a smooth surface to run over the needle plate. So stabilizer is necessary, guys, but not too much. That's the other thing. Three stacks of it, where people people telling me they're like, okay, well I like to use two pieces of medium cutaway, and then I put a piece of tearaway on the back for crispness, and then I put a um, on the top. I've got three layers of of you know water soluble. By the time it's cardboard in your shirt that's too much stabilizer. Usually you've got a problem <laughs> with digitizing or with uh, the way you're hooping things, something else is wrong. So, and here's the uh, part B. And this is one like <laughs> Terry, I was horrified to see that a machine manufacturer was telling people this. I don't yeah. know which one. The guy said, oh, the person who I bought my machine from said, uh, sample on stabilizer, do all your sampling of designs on stabilizer to save money on fabric and garments. Um, just to d- let you folks know, if you embroider something on stabilizer and then you go embroider it on a knit hat, those are very different materials and the thread's gonna suck down into the knit hat and you won't be able to see what you did wrong or if this design will actually work on the stabilizer. The only kind of errors you'll be able to see are gross errors like the sequence is off, you didn't program the colors right, maybe something's flat copied twice in the software, especially if you're digitizing yourself, maybe you'll see something like that. But anything that has to do with pull compensation with the registration being off, with stuff sucking down into the material, none of that will be able to be seen on stabilizer because it's absolutely a flat, perfect surface that is not going to interact and it doesn't stretch or move. So yes, can you sample on stabilizer? I guess if you want to, but you're catching a 10th of the things that could go wrong with your design. So yeah, sample on it, but you're not gonna see the interaction between the embroidery and the garment. And on top of that, Really, guys, the garments aren't that expensive. If you don't already have things that you've messed up on to cut up for samples, I'm surprised. And, you know, go for you. <laughs> I did. I had plenty. Or honestly, I, I used to do things like when I was sampling on leather, I'd go get a, a beat up leather coat from the local Goodwill and use that to sample on because honestly, that cost is worth its weight in gold in understanding how things work. Yeah. So absolutely don't you know don't run stuff on uh, just stabilizer especially if you're doing something new new material you're learning a new ta- a new uh, technique you're trying something out try it out on the garment it's supposed to go on because you'll be a lot happier when you don't ruin a run of eight or say like in my shop 24 brand new performance polos from Ojo. Um, you don't want to run that on stabilizer and then find out that your design wasn't good for performance materials. Uh, <laughs> so run it on the real thing, folks. It's it's worth From the cost. Experience. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I, yes. I, I'm going to apologize to everyone because I keep turning my mic on and off because now the tree trimmers are blowing the excess leaves away. So <laughs> even though I have the light flashing on my patio going on air, on air. <laughs> but, uh, but I, hey, I want to attract them. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to say something uh, about about suppliers, and, and uh, no offense to the suppliers that that are out sure. there, because uh, a lot of times they sell screen printing equipment, embroidery equipment, sign equipment, uh, you know, uh, large format uh, solvent printers, and so a lot of what they tell are uh, tell you is based on, you know, I had the I had three hours of training on this, and this is the one thing I remember, uh, so. Uh, you know, as a as a consumer, we have to educate ourselves before we get out there because a lot of the folks that we're talking to um, are not necessarily experts in that. And and uh, by the way, Jeff Morgenthau has a really good comment here: uh, misinformation, recognize sales spin versus um, versus okay. facts. And uh, Aaron took it off the I screen took it off to here. see if I <laughs> actually had memorized that quote before I. <laughs> if, if what you're being told isn't backed up with facts, then it's probably misinformation. And, and that's an excellent point. And so don't just talk to one person when you're out there shopping around. Uh, we did have a, a comment from uh, Todd Downing. It's actually a question. Uh, what about DTG and poly? Uh, polyester, is that available yet? Uh, here's the deal with printing on polyester. Uh, again, I've said this before, what you can do on one direct to garment printer, you can do on all direct to garment printers. What you can't do on one, you can't do on any. There, you can print polyester. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a multi-step process, mainly because you have to cure, instead of 340 degrees, you have to cure at 275 degrees. 
for and you do that for 45 seconds, but you do it three times to get a, a good cure. Yes, there is polyester pretreat on the market. Uh, I don't know that any of our customers are going to be satisfied with the result right now, just to be perfectly honest. So, yeah. um, you know, the, 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 is it coming? Yes. Is is it is it a slower road than we anticipated? It is. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, it, Terry, you make a really interesting point. In fact, it gets to one of my points later, but just it, same thing with the pre-treating a white shirt you know, can you do it? Should you do it? All that other stuff that kind of boils down to, like you said, you know, grandma's going to love the one without the pre-treated shirt. If you're reprinting artist uh, proofs, that may be a different story, but you're charging more for that. So, you know, the same thing with the polyester, can you charge enough to make that process work for you? And and is the result going to be acceptable to your customers? So I think that's good stuff. Um, lots of great comments going on here. Uh, Christine kind of backing up what, uh, what you said there, Eric, uh, sewing out samples on stabilizer would help sell more stabilizer. Interesting thought. Um, <laughs> doesn't make any sense though. You would you wouldn't get a real usable sample that shows problems and how the finished product will look. So, you know, it's also funny about that. Uh, small text, especially sometimes, especially high contrast. I've seen small blank black text. It actually looks worse on the stabilizer because there's no fibers. It's so smooth that it doesn't blend the way it does to your eye when you look at it on a garment. And some I've seen people saying, what's wrong with this digitizing? And I'm looking at it going, nothing. It's just on stabilizer. So everything looks really egregious and all the holes look really big that the needle leaves behind. So you can actually get a worse looking result sometimes on the stabilizer yeah. too. It, there's nothing about it that makes a ton of sense. Nice. Okay. And for everybody listening in, especially if you're catching on the podcast version later on, we're all over the place here. So just, just enjoy the ride. <laughs> it's direct to garment. It's embroidery. We'll probably talk a little sublimation. I know we're going to talk some screen print uh, oh, yeah. all over the place. We also have a new piece of misinformation from Jeff Morgenthaler. Uh, the tree trimmers are there for landscaping. Uh, no, they are there to harass Terry. So <laughs> yeah, we cleared yeah. up that information. So that's good. Um, <laughs> Must be some kind of karma. Yeah, hey, yeah. I, I, I do have a real quick comment uh, also about sure. our notes. It looks like uh, when uh, Aaron, you and I do uh, do some seminars together and my slides have one sentence and yep. your slides have two paragraphs and, and Eric uh, is apparently the same way. So our notes here, I have like a little blurb and you guys have like uh, all this. You guys could turn these into articles. There's, there, there's uh, a lot of information here. I'm giving away our secrets, Terry. <laughs> so that, that's what we call the, uh, that's the safety throwback. If everything blows out of your mind in the middle of the show, you're like, I'll just read the thing I already wrote. Yeah. All right. So got a good question here from uh, one of the regulators. Lenora Lewis says, Eric, right. this may, may not be misinformation, but can you address the trend? I think I'm seeing of huge, super complex designs that probably shouldn't be embroidered. I tend to think just because you can doesn't mean you should. Seems like a lot more bulletproof designs. Is it just my imagination? Uh, yeah. First, for all the people who aren't embroiders, I'll briefly say bulletproof designs mean they're so dense and so covered up that you, literally they start getting really heavy and you can't bend them. They don't, you, like literally they don't flex on a body. So it's like cardboard. They're pretty horrible. So honestly, yeah, that does happen. And the thing is the really large designs, I think what you're seeing often is digitizers showing off. Because what we have are so many digitizers in the market um, overseas and here who are trying to show, check out this awesome quality I can do. I can do photographs. I can do this painterly work. And so they do these huge pieces to try and show you, hey, this is what I can do. The thing is, most of those are not particularly what you're going to do. Even in my career, all the time I spent working jacket back pieces, really huge detailed pieces, incredibly small portion of what I did in my job. Um, now, the truth of the matter is, can you make them run on materials and not be bulletproof? You can. Um, when I was judging contests, and I won't throw anybody directly under the bus, but I used to judge the golden needle for stitches. And I was like the, if you guys remember back in the day, like uh, Simon Cowell, uh, I was the bad guy. Because I would jump <laughs> in and go, yeah, this looks beautiful, but I ran my hand along it and so dense that it's wavy, horrible. There's little parts that would stick into you like nails. And I wouldn't put this on machine for fear of breaking needles. Take it back. Like this is a production contest. This is a contest for actual producers. This is not to make it pretty. It's not to put it in a frame. The other trick is everybody put everything on canvas bags because they're indestructible. You get 15 <laughs> canvas bags because you can't do anything wrong to it to make it flex. It's not like it's all on performance wear. Yes, you can lighten up densities, do really big pieces that are flexible and look nice and have a balance between the amount of thread you put in and what happens to the garment. But yeah, there really is this tendency to just go all out and do crazy stuff. 
there are places where it's great hats you can beat up a hat and it looks great and some of the great hat designs are out there really complex but yeah i think what you're seeing frankly what you're seeing right now is uh digitizer showing off embroidery showing off and honestly some of that showing the work makes sense they're trying to say look i can do all this highly technical stuff so someone goes that person knows what they're doing and then sends them their left chest to get digitized so that's that's really what you're seeing yes it's happening um is it a bad thing yes and no when it's a lot of auto digitizing or um stuff where they've just randomly thrown a bunch of thread on the, the real trick is this and i've taught my people to do it and sometimes they're rabid but all my little followers ask them to see the stitch out if it's a digital preview and you can tell that it's a digital preview out of the software go that looks great do you have a stitch out for us to look at because nice. a good portion of the time the actual stitch out looks terrible because they don't actually uh, know how to compensate for all the stresses they're putting on the garment gotcha. so Lately, people are getting more stitches out there, but yeah, you are seeing those, and that's the way to combat it. Nice. Okay. So, if uh, if the regulators are are titled the regulators, yes. what, what are we calling your followers, Eric? The the rappers, the e riches, the. <laughs> I, I noticed that you also call them your little followers, and and for anybody who doesn't know, Eric, he's very tall. So. <laughs> I don't mean literally that they're little. I, I say little as it's it's supposed to be a nice comment. It's like, endearing, a, I love my people. It's endearing. It's an oh. endearing term of endearment. Um, yeah. All my little followers. Because also because honestly, because what happens is I will jump on when a digitizer does this and say, hey, that looks great. Let's see your stitch out. And then I get like a horde of people show up and go, yeah, where's your stitch out? If it's not stitches, it's not real. And then it's like, a, it's a wave. It's like a World War Z. All of the, <laughs> all of my, all of the people who who've heard me say this a million times come and just destroy the poor person who did nice. that. And I, I feel kind of bad about that. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. Well, All for right. those of you that are uh, <laughs> following along here live, we've got some fantastic stuff happening in the comments section. Uh, really we great. We won't be able to get to all the comments for sure, but uh, here we go. The E rich campers. Uh, that's, that's a good one. Uh, Brian says, uh, and, and the location <laughs> needleheads, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. I don't think you're that small, Brian. <laughs> the location needleheads. I like needleheads is not a bad one, though. All all right, right. Stick with that. Nice. All my needleheads. Uh, all right. <laughs> so again, it was my job to keep us on track. I failed miserably here. So <laughs> let, let me. Uh, I'll, I'll get to uh, just because as we were putting this show together, of course, you know, it's that it's the law of attraction. Um, you get. Uh, something's bound to happen. I got a, uh, an email from somebody asking to uh, append our, we, we did a sublimation printer kind of review discussion, how to price your product thing here on two regular guys way, way, way back. And they wanted us to append our article with their article. And here, here was the email that they sent. Uh, um, and, and it was called the best sublimation printers you can buy in 2019. Uh, it says, if you check it out, I think you'll find that my post is a lot more comprehensive and updated. I was thinking that my post might make a great addition to your article. If you're willing to add a link to my post, I'd be more than happy to feature your post on my social media accounts. I'm sure you'd get some nice publicity. Um, and I'm not going to post the review because uh, one of the first lines in their review says, applying a dye on a surface with a low temperature. <laughs> and, and Eric and Terry have both read it, and uh, um, it was it was like a train wreck. I couldn't stop reading it. It was just so horrid, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> complete misinformation. But this is you know uh, a best reviews that uh, possibly could come up when you type that into Google, kind of thing, because they're out there working their tails off to try to get it up the search ranking. Mm -hmm. They they probably they probably think the word sublimation is pronounced sublimation or sublimination or sublimation uh, i hear it so much them all. um so. there's a lot of reference to to, pr to putting it on cotton as well <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah lots of and uh, not not one yeah. did they actually have a sublimation ink in any of the printers that they were uh, referencing <laughs> and all of the links in the article were affiliate clickbait type uh, link. So um, <laughs> that's going to happen a lot. So the moral of the story is uh, taking advice from anybody, even even these two gentlemen here that uh, I know know their stuff. You want to do your own research on top of that, though. It seems like everybody just wants somebody to kind of tell them what to do. Give, give me the magic bullet. Um, but that's what's opening us up to these kinds of clickbait kind of deals is that you know, sometimes they might have ulterior motives. You know, the the link in the articles uh, were just that, just a 
a way for them to make some cheap money. <laughs> um, so that oh, they yeah. tried to entice me with the, the opportunity to get some more publicity <laughs> for two regular guys. And it's like, that's not what we're about. You know, we're, we're about good information and, and sharing the right stuff. And, and, uh, you know, so, but even the stuff that we share, you know, I encourage you guys to go out there and, and do your own research, find out what works for you and, and, and that kind of stuff. So that's my kind of, uh, I don't know, moral of the story, uh, p- pitch piece. So, uh, yeah, totally. Um, oh, here, here, one, one quick thing I want to, Christine says, I get those kinds of pitches all the time. People who want to guest post on our blog and want me to write something for them for free. Uh, I always want to ask if they did even five minutes of research before they pitch me <laughs> and, and the likelihood of the answer to that, Christine is no. So, <laughs> uh, all right, Eric, exactly. you're, you're back up again and then Terry, will get uh, sure. into some screen print here. Okay. Well, and I have to follow on yours by saying I had something very similar happen. Anybody who's in embroidery knows that you get pitched by digitizers constantly. Um, no matter what you post, there's always somebody saying, I can digitize that for you or jumping in on it. And uh, recently on one of my, uh, I had an Instagram live thing where I just jumped out and I actually shared one of my uh, five things videos I did some time for a while ago. Yeah. And um, when I did, immediately a digitizer jumps on and goes, I can do your digitizing. You sure you want some? And I said, I, I probably can do my own digitizing. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't mean. I didn't slag them off and said, no, thanks. I got it covered. And all of uh, the people who were on there jumped on and were like, uh, do you, he even knew who you were? Did he even know what you do? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I know, guys. But you're, <laughs> these guys you're referring to the needleheads, I'm sure. Uh, yes, the needleheads were, were definitely out to get them. But <laughs> yeah, Luke says uh, link building and SEO driven tactics can be very toxic for good information. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Very Excellent. true, Luke. Thank yeah. you for that, uh, for sharing that. So, all right, Eric, what's your, what's your, here's your my, yeah, piece? here's my next thing. The next thing pretty frequently, and I answered something about this just yesterday. Uh, somebody will always come to me and say, hey, I've got this bobbin thread that's showing up at the front of my embroidery. So uh, what's wrong with my digitizing? What do I tell my digitizer to do? And what I like to reply is uh, nothing unless they work in your shop and they can clean your bobbin. Um, <laughs> digitizers don't control tension. If you have bobbin thread coming up or uh, anything like that, that's that's really absolutely a tension problem. It's on the machine. And frankly, a lot of it is literally gunk underneath your um a uh, tension spring. There's a flat metal spring. If you're an embroiderer, you know what it is. It's on your bobbin case. And pretty frequently running a business card under that will clean that up. And it happens frequently, especially if you're running things that make a lot of lint. And in general, you just got to clean out under that spring. Um, also, clean your spring, replace your bobbin, check that you don't have your um, bobbin case out of round. If you drop that thing on concrete from a height, the likely hood is it may be ruined because you can get them out of round and when you're pulling your bobbin thread out you'll find that it catches every once in a while that something is catching in your bobbin um once that happens the likelihood is you're not gonna be able to bend that back out straight necessarily or at least it may not be worth it for the seven eight bucks depending on who you're buying it from that a uh bobbin case might cost you uh have extra bobbin cases on hand because that's often what goes on so some something is wrong with the bobbin most of the time if bobbin threads coming up to the top and digitizers have no control i wish i could control tension <laughs> with my files so that i could <laughs> fix it for someone you can't uh the only thing you might have is if a digitizer goes really crazy with the density and it's super heavy maybe you're punching through a bunch of thread that's already there you may see loops of top thread trouble like that but frankly really the you don't have issues with tension that are due to your digitizing. So really don't think that it's the digitizing causing it. Um, Really check that bobbin and the cost of a bobbin is absolutely worth it to make sure these things don't happen. Also, you may have trouble with the tension on the bobbin toward the end of the bobbin. Using traditional bobbins, not magnetic, um, toward the end of the bobbin, you may have differences in tension as well if you're using the regular old cardboard, plastics, whatever they are. Uh, And frankly, I've had cardboard bobbins, and I'm not calling out any brand. There are multiple brands who've done this where every once in a while you'll have actually a bobbin itself be slightly out of round, and the um, cardboard sides will be partially out of round. And if you already have a a little bit of a tight bobbin case or a bobbin case that has a little bit of bending to it, um, then it catches more frequently. And if you're seeing intermittent problems with your tension, look at that bobbin case as well. But yeah, it's in the bobbin, not the file. And frankly, I see people, people reach for that tension knob too. Get your hand away from the tension knob until the bobbin is clean and you've figured that out. Um, it's usually at the bobbin, not the top tension. So once you start cranking that tension left and right, you are going to be out of tension. Get it set once. And most of the time, if you keep your machine clean, it's the bobbin. It's causing the trouble first. So the key word here is bobbin. Bobbin. Yeah, I said bobbin like 50 <laughs> times and so it didn't have meaning anymore. I get that. But there's a reason it really is a right. problem. The people really have trouble attention. And it's the bobbin, folks, most most often. 
<laughs> nice, nice. All right. Well, again, great comments happening in the in the comment mm -hmm. section here. So uh, if you are catching the podcast version of this, make sure you head over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash two regular guys. That's the number two regular guys. And uh, check out all the comments. Get get in and participate and, uh, and, and add your comments in there as well. Um, all right, Terry. Well, uh, I'm I'm going to. As as we talked about, I'm supposed to keep this on track. We are going to go into bonus time. There's just no <laughs> no doubt about it. It never happens. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, Len Lenora says it's the bobbin, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I, pretty, I wanna, pretty regularly. <laughs> I, I believe that you need to change from needleheads to Eric's bobbins. So <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right. So Terry, uh, we need to get some screen printing. Uh, Marion says, how about the screen printers that never degree screens? Oh, uh, you know what? A, a shill, because we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. Well, let's do it. <laughs> here's, a, here's a question uh, that I hear regularly. Uh, how many coats of emulsion do I need to apply? I'm sorry, how many coats of emulsion? Here, here's, the, here's the deal with, with emulsion on the screen. And, and for non-screen printers, uh, when, we, uh, when we screen print, we, we start by coating this, this screen with a photosensitive emulsion. And... Uh, I could bring 10 screen printers in here and, and uh, uh, nine of them are in the soundproof booth and they're out here uh, and one comes out and says, okay, well, I coat once on this side and twice on this side. Uh, and the next person comes out and goes, I, I coat once on each side. I let it dry and then I do three more coats on this side and, and a thousand other variations. Uh, here's now... Uh, now, sometimes you, you you do need a thicker laydown of um, of emulsion for for one reason or another. But but my rule of thumb is this: I put one coat on one side, one coat on the other side, and I'm good to go. And I could do ten thousand shirts with that if I want. The key to that though is you dry it just the way it goes in your press, with the ink side up and the and the print side down on a rack, and that's going to make the emulsion fall through and give you a really flat surface. And and, and our, our podcast listeners can't see all my hand motions here, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> imagine if you will. But uh, and, and here's here's the reason for that. It's it's a Band-Aid. All the things we're talking about here today are basically Band-Aids. Uh, I've, I've got a problem, so let me Put a bandaid on it rather than figuring out what the problem is, and 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 it's just like the 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 comment. Um, if you don't degrease your screens, you're going to have pinholes. And what does that mean? As I'm printing, as it, maybe the first couple of shirts you don't see it, then all of a sudden there's a little blue dot, and then after ten shirts there's seven little blue dots. Those are pinholes. We are using a water-based emulsion. If there's any oil or contamination, oil from your hand on that that screen, then it's going to cause a weak area in the emulsion. And so as you print, then those, those weak areas are going to open up as pinholes. So what's the solution? Well, obviously, it's more emulsion, right? <laughs> no, it's not more emulsion. Degrease your screen properly and make that window of time short. Degrease it, get it dry as quick as you can, pref preferably uh, in, in, a, in an enclosed area with a dehumidifier. Uh, get it uh, coated with emulsion. Get that emulsion dry as quickly as you can because it's going to attract contaminants. And once it's dry, you're good to go. But, uh, but more coats of emulsion is not, uh, is not the solution. You're gonna, the suppliers will be happy to sell you more emulsion. It's harder to wash out. There's, there's all kinds of issues that this Band-Aid uh, caused. But um, uh, and Terry Sanders says, I preach what you're saying all the time, Terry. I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's not more emulsion. It's, it's uh, degreasing the screen properly every time you use that screen. And and that will eliminate ninety nine percent of pinholes. You don't have to pile more emulsion on there and 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 make it more difficult for you for the rest of the process. So uh, I tried to make that quick because you know I, I have to tell you guys uh, I I thought well I only have uh, three or four things to talk about. Maybe this morning I should add a couple. I, it's we've been doing this for seven years. Why do I not know that uh, adding a couple works, adding way. a couple never works out. 
<laughs> right. But, so Luke says that uh, quoting Richard Greaves, all mistakes begin in pre-press processes. Exactly yeah. right. It's all about the screen. To get the screens right, you're ninety percent there. Yeah, it's it is called screen printing for a reason, right? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's see here. We're, yeah, like you said, Terry. We, we, I think we all added a few things, but uh, we're we're getting into bonus time. Eric, do you you want to catch your last one, or we're going to save that for a future edition? I'll do this really fast. All right, in really fast. Possible. This is the one that you hear all the time. No, seriously, I can do this pretty quickly. Right. Embroidery. Everybody asks, what should things cost? And someone will tell you every single time, one dollar per thousand stitches, as if that is a magic number that works for everyone. Um, <laughs> Every time I hear that, the first thing I say is, I can't take my Albuquerque paycheck and go move to Manhattan and live the same way I do here. Uh, <laughs> there is no way that $1 per thousand stitches is the basis for every shop. There's different overhead. You have different numbers of heads. Every job is even different to the point where sometimes you're going to price differently. And the flat thing about this is, though I like a good pricing model that gives you fair pricing for everybody and allows you to quote easily, the first thing I want to tell people, everyone's heard like value-based pricing or that we don't have to, you know, do pricing that way, or maybe we do value adds or perceived value. You've heard people talk about it, but the first thing to learn and the most critical thing to learn is that price does not have to be directly proportional to cost. The only way to raise price is not to add more labor or more materials. You can price based on value. So pegging those things directly together doesn't always make sense. So, yeah, <laughs> though, um, Definitely, you need to know things about what it costs. It may cost your shop a different amount to create that thousand stitches than it costs a different shop. If you don't know that, if you don't know your overhead, if you don't know about your equipment or your production time or the overall production you can do, you will not really be able to peg down those prices. So that dollar per thousand stitches, you know, go ahead with it if you want to, but know that you may not be making the kind of money that you could be making, or you may be pricing it incorrectly because of the value of the service you provide. Nice. All right. Well, yeah. you got some people uh, following up same dollar per thousand. Oh, yeah. This, this, I talked about 20 years ago. was always <laughs> not. Uh, oops. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff I, comment, but you can make up your losses in volume. <laughs> no, <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> no, I've heard it over and over and people will yeah. still say it to this day. It's easy, but like most easy things, it's uh, misinformation. It's not really the thing. It, it's got to be a little harder than that if you want it to be right. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll give you a, a, a B, B plus <laughs> on quick. So. <laughs> Back to that, what a done. And, and, when, and when Eric refers to taking his Albuquerque paycheck to Manhattan, he's actually referring to his Winnebago. That's He calls it the Albuquerque paycheck. So. <laughs> uh, how do you think I'm going to get all my little followers up there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Sometimes all you just have to add a stupid tax. I love it. All right. <laughs> Um, all right, guys. Well, yeah, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity here in just a second for some closing thoughts. As I as I said, we will be in bonus time, so uh, keep keep the comments coming. Um, I wanted to just kind of give my closing thoughts here, and and I guess for me, it's I want you guys to go. You know, listeners here, our regulars, I want you guys to go think about what you do in your business that maybe in hindsight could have stemmed out of some mis misinformation you got or or started with. So um, I want to post this picture up here because uh, one one of my favorite stories, and I'm sure I've shared it plenty of times on this uh, on this show, is when I showed up uh, as the new boss at a place uh, a few years back. This was the first thing I did as I posted this picture, and I'm going to make it the big picture here in the middle of the video screen, on my door. And it is a picture of a guy, for those of you listening to the podcast version, it's a picture of a guy getting a, a goring by the bulls and the running of the bulls in Pamplona. And it says tradition. Just because you've always done it that way does not mean it's not incredibly <laughs> stupid. So, <laughs> you know, basically it was like, okay, change is coming. And the answer of, well, we've always done it that way is not going to suffice. And so think about that in your business. What is it that maybe you've done just because it's always been the way you've done it? that maybe came out of, you know, maybe it's that thousand uh, dollar per thousand stitch pricing structure, or, um, you know, I have to do this because of somebody told me this, you know, kind of thing. So um, think, think about that in your business and what you need to maybe review and make some changes to, because it's just the, the way you've always done it. So there's my closing remarks. Uh, Terry, I'm going to go to you first and then Eric, will let you close it out. 
Well, uh, first of all, there are lots of ways to achieve a goal and lots of ways to to achieve uh, uh, production, uh, no matter what type of decorating you're doing. But, uh, uh, you know, take what you see uh, on the Internet. Uh, not everything on the Internet is true. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> and uh, and also. Uh, what you hear at a trade show isn't necessarily true. It it, it may be uh, it may be shaded a, a little bit to to direct you towards a particular product or service or whatever. But but uh, here's what I want you to do: do just do your homework. Uh, don't use just one source for information, and uh, and do your homework, and uh, and all will be right in the right with the world. <laughs> and, and again, Terry, I, I I appreciate you making that point because we want you guys to do your homework. You know, we feel really confident that we're bringing in fantastic guests and we're, we're giving good information and, and we really work hard for that. But you know what? I still want to encourage people to do their homework, even on the things you hear on this show. So um, yeah, definitely. So Eric, close us out here. <laughs> well, the other thing I'll say about that is not only to agree with that, but say, go ahead and test these things for yourself. Uh, I have people who have different ways of doing things that test them and really enjoy the different way they come up with. And it might not be my way. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, we're on the internet too. I just saw that from Jeff, the comment, <laughs> wait, aren't you on the internet? No, seriously. That's what I'm going to say. You, I didn't say everything was wrong. I said no, not everything. Wrong. But here's the, <laughs> take it back into your shop and do it. If you're sitting there with equipment and you're not testing for yourself, you're, you're missing out. I mean, this is, this is the phrase I always use because I teach 3d foam digitizing, which is actually fairly subjective and difficult. And this is the standard joke I lead off with every time. If you ask three digitizers how to digitize for 3d foam, you'll get five answers and at least four of them work most of the time. <laughs> <That's very good. laughs> so honestly, there are different ways to do things. You may find one that works better for you, but truthfully, it's not something you can't test for yourself. Get out there and test for yourself. I still test for things all the time. And honestly, not only do I test all the time, I come up with new things, I learn new things, and I change my methods if something works better. So honestly, I don't see anything wrong with that. Plus, share back with people like us what you tested. Show us samples. You think we're wrong? Show us what's going on. I would love to learn new things. I, I still learn it every single day. So same thing here. Get out there, play with your equipment, uh, learn some things, and test it for yourself. And then find out what works for you. You may come up with the next thing. That We don't want to be the dinosaurs who are still recommending that dollar per thousand or still telling you to use materials that are barely made anymore because we've been using them way back in the day. Um, learn, test, and share with everybody who you can. Nice. Excellent stuff. All right. Well, good stuff. I, I'm not sure if that dinosaur comment was directed at anybody in particular, Terry. But <laughs> Oh, I didn't. That is not me. That's Aaron. <laughs> I've, I've been so nice to Terry all day. I, and, uh, I know. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> I apologize, Terry. I think I, I, Aaron I, gave me the E-Rich today, too. I think that's... I know, man. He's wound up. <laughs> today. Right. Must be that long weekend coming. <laughs> I, I hope you got here. So, um, right. Stuff. <laughs> All right, Eric, what do you got coming up here? What's uh, what's the latest for you? Uh, for me, honestly, right now I'm off the road for a little while, but you're going to see more of me online in the magazines, probably because I'm off the road. So you're going to find my monthly columns always in Printware Magazine and Images Magazine out of the UK, with both of which you can get online digitally no matter where you are. So guys from both sides, check it out. You can get those digital copies of the magazines and also Aaron and Terry in some of these. Uh, I recently did an interview with uh, Teresa Hagel over at Wearables, should be coming out soon, uh, talking about the rise of the prosumer. So yeah, that's something that should be coming. People always are asking me about prosumers and the cottage industry, and that's something I actually talked about with at length with Teresa. So friend of the show, Teresa Hagel, will be having a new thing out shortly on that. And also, you can always find me everywhere as Eric Campbell online. Don't forget the little H, E Rich, as it often comes up here. And I love to uh, interact with you people, uh, even you Instagram needleheads who go and attack the other digitizers. <laughs> to uh, mess with me. Uh, I like seeing you guys. So come out and interact with me and find me via ericcampbell.com. Awesome. All right. Well, I've, uh, I'm have i also off the road for the most part here, but uh, have been continuing my small business Saturdays every Saturday. I'm moving the times all over the place. I uh, had some, <laughs> my, my son started doing volleyball uh, clinics on Saturday mornings and you know, family comes first as, as everybody knows about me. And <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll find another time. This is, this is fun. So, uh, but tomorrow I've got Terry and I think Terry's uh, joining us here. Terry Saunders from CMO screen printing supply is actually going to be joining me tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go a little deeper dive into uh, some of the back to school stuff that I had talked about a few weeks back. Uh, she kind of followed up with a direct message with some really great ideas and thoughts. So um, I said, Hey, 
guess what? <laughs> you, you're going to come on the show and talk about these things. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be two o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. So then work your way back from there, whatever time zone you're in. And uh, so that'll be happening tomorrow. Also, the uh, podcast version of that is uh active. It's uh, happening. So I think there's about eight episodes up now. If you just go to smallbusinesssaturdayspodcast.com, you can check that out. Uh, Terry, your turn. Where, where, where are you at? Yeah, I, I am on the road. Yeah, as opposed to on Eric. The road. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, uh, I've got coming up uh, June 14th. I'll be in Baltimore doing the Equipment Zone Roadshow. And we're not only uh, going to be doing uh, direct to garment, but this time we're going to also be doing sublimation and solvent printing as well. It's a free day long event. We're buying you lunch <laughs> and uh, you can find out and sign up for that at equipmentzone.com uh, website. Uh, in, in about two weeks, right before that, I'm going to be doing uh, the ISS Houston show uh, and I'm going to be doing the day before the show opens a day long uh, DTG class, uh, with several speakers. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, uh, the, on Saturday during the uh, the show, I'll be doing my regular hour, 20 minute uh and always running over the DG seminar. A <laughs> uh, couple more things real quick. Uh, my uh, complete screen printing business course. I'm going to be in Chicago with Atlas Screen Supply June 22nd and 23rd. I'm going to be in Phoenix at Workhorse Products July 20th and 21st. All my upcoming 2019 events are at terrycombs.com under the uh, title Tour Dates. Excellent. Good stuff there, Terry. All right, guys. Well, a little bit of bonus time, but not as bad as I thought. So um, <laughs> on the back here, I think I did a good job keeping us on track. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Great you job, did, you did. We, thank you guys so much for sharing your stories. Thanks to the regulators for their sharing of the stories. Uh, real quick before uh, you get there, Jeff had uh, misinformation, free lunch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do have to listen to Terry for that. Yeah. See, now, now I was mean. Uh, well, maybe yeah, he's so, yeah. maybe he's judging that free lunch. You know, oh, hey, it's yeah. free. It's free. <laughs> what, what, what's for lunch? It's free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Eric, uh, thanks for uh, coming on the show and help us to get today. Eric's our show producer and helping us put all these shows together every week. And uh, you can find Eric at ericcampbell.com. And thanks to our sponsor in brilliance and their family of products. Yeah, definitely. And I want to remind everybody out there, we do have that special coupon code over in brilliance. Uh, since I'm not in the comments to spam you with it today, uh, <laughs> use the code two RG. That is the number two RG at embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off any products in the Embrilliance store. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for uh, providing that to uh, to our listeners. They uh, should take advantage of it, definitely. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, next week we've got uh, our friend Joe Pizza, Joey Pizza, no, Joe Piazza from uh, <laughs> and uh, Hollywood Joe, as, as he's sometimes called because uh, he doubles as an actor as well. He actually is a fantastic actor, too. So um, he's going to be joining us. We're going to be talking... Uh, cool. I don't know. Uh, we titled it Sublimation, Vinyl, and Glitter. Oh, my. So it <laughs> should be a really fun conversation with that, Joe. So, that good. will be a fun show. Joe's a pretty dynamic guy. So, But until then, uh, Eric Campbell, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.